Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I do greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, I thank God for this privilege that God is giving to me to stand before you with His Word. Uh, Pastor Sam, Pastor Shubhu, Amachi, everyone, uh, may God bless us as we spend time our uh, time together. And I greet you in Jesus' name. I would like to bring your attention to Book of Philippians, chapter three. Verse number eight through twelve. Book of Philippians, chapter three, verses eight through twelve. Enough, enough. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us another Sunday in our life to be in your presence. You have been so good to us from the beginning till this day of this year. As we step into the new day of this month, Lord, you be with us, Lord. Lord, we are here to worship you and exalt your name. Thank you for blessing our time. As we continue to see it in your presence, speak to our hearts. We are here to listen to your word, Lord. Speak to us, O oh God. We want to know more about you, Lord. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Here, Paul the Apostle, making an aspiration, desire, about knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection. Doesn't mean that he is coming to Christ for the first time and making that request or that you know, expressing that desire. Having been in the ministry or following Christ for after a long time, maybe 30, 40 years, still he's showing forth his desire that I want to know more about Christ and the power of resurrection. This morning, my topic for the sermon is Know Christ More and the Power of His Resurrection. We know that the world in which we live is full of technologies. How this technology developed after deep research, isn't it? After every invention, there's a hard work behind. Spend a lot of time, a lot of you know, hours, days, years before they found, find out something and bring it to the light. They will study about it, do a deep research. The phone that we use, for example, iPhone 13, it was not like that some years ago. Every year, they come up with new uh, ideas, not uh, new features, I don't know what to say in technological terms, but you know that, what I'm talking about. And next year, we're going to hear something new. How that happens? Because they want to know more about it. The more they will try uh, or make an effort to learn, they will come up with new ideas. As a Christian, child of God, we have to keep that same policy in our Christian life to know more about Christ. To go more in depth of knowing him in our personal life. That's what Paul wants to say here. I want to know more about Christ. Who say it? Paul, the apostle, one of the greatest scholars at that time. He knew all the laws. He knew, he knew everything. And he knew Christ better than us, or more than us, I would say. 
But still he says, I want to know more about Christ. What all I knew so far in my life about him is nothing. I want to know more about Christ. This morning, dear children of God, God wants us to know more about him. We have to have that desire to know him. Not by some knowledge, not by what others say, but we need to know him through our personal experiences. All the knowledge you hear from someone will go up after four, five minutes or after some hours from your mind. But the experience that you get in your own life about him, that will last forever. That's what Paul wants to make it clear, clear here. I want to know more about Christ. Two things he says here. Actually, there are four things included in the verse number 10, 11, or from 9 through 11. But I want to just uh, you know, emphasize two important things here. He says, I want to know more about Christ and uh, the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. We also, you know, thank God for, you know, the, the, uh, this, the you know, hospitals, doctors that God has given to us. But they can't save anybody once they die, isn't it? They can maximum try their level best until someone's last breath. But once they've gone, passing after their last breath, doctors, they say, they can't do anything anymore. Gone. But Paul here says, I want to know the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection that raised Jesus from dead. That's what I want to know. If I don't know this power of resurrection, I can't experience when he comes to get me. You know, even we, after we die from this world, our blessed assurance and hope is that when Jesus comes, he, we will take up with him. Isn't it? How that is possible? Through the power of resurrection. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Paul wanted to know and he experienced more of God's power in his life. Because he knew when I experience this, this is enough for me even while I'm on this world as I'm serving the Lord. And beyond that, when he comes to get me, I will be taken up with him with this power of resurrection. So thinking or keeping that in mind, he expressed his desire. I want to know more about Christ. And the power of resurrection. What is our joy as we live for Christ? What is our joy? Coming and having fellowship or clapping hands, singing songs, then go from here? Or hanging around with other Christians? Is that giving you joy in your life? What is our joy as we follow Christ or live for Christ? The joy to live for Christ is power of resurrection. Amen. Amen. If that power of resurrection won't give you, not giving you joy, then our Christian life is in vain. We have no hope at all. We are just like mere people in this world. There's no difference between us and them. So the joy to live for Christ is the power of resurrection. Having been knowing or realizing that fact, Paul is emphasizing, I want to know more about Christ and the power of resurrection. This power is not only to celebrate once a year, rather experience every day of our Christian life. The world celebrates power of resurrection once a year, you know, when it comes to the day of Easter. Yeah, they, knew, they know that. God raised Jesus from the dead. So at least all the Christians in the world, they will celebrate Easter once a year. But Paul wanted to say that he would experience that power of resurrection every day. Yeah. Not once a year with other people knowing, without knowing the meaning of it and what it is. He wants to celebrate every day by knowing the meaning of it, what it is, what is the power of it. He wants to experience 
every day of his life. We have to know this power more and more. But before we experience this power, or while we experience this power, our desire also is for knowing Christ. Pursue Christ for transformation, to get more knowledge about him through the personal experience with him. We know this uh, background of this uh, book, but I have no time now to explain. So he is encouraging people. Paul, not to encourage people, wrote this epistle in Philipp, uh, to Philippians. He established this church at Philip in his second missionary journey. Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 14, we read that. So Paul established this church in his second journey. This is the first church in Europe. Okay? The church, of, church at Philip, that is the first church in Europe. Do you know who was the first believer in Europe? Who was the first believer in Europe? Lydia. Yeah. Lydia was the first believer in Europe came to Christ through the ministry of Paul in his second missionary journey. So this church loved Paul very much. And he also loved them very much. That is being expressed in chapter number four, some of the verse that have uh, been spoken or written by Paul. So here, since he loved them very much, his desire is to know Christ more and he also wants to convey the same desire to his people whom he was fostering in his spiritual life, in their spiritual life. So that's what we read here. Verse number eight, he says, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. So, still he is making every effort to gain Christ. Know him more. Pursue Christ for achievements. What is that achievements? That's what mentioned in verse number 10 and 11. So he is inviting us to know Christ or test God, know or experience the power of his resurrection, then two more other things, know or enjoy the fellowship of his sufferings. Also, he wants being confirmed with his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So, as I told you earlier, I want to emphasize more about to know Christ and the power of resurrection. Know Christ! You know, there's a Bible college in uh, Kerala. Uh, that's the first Bible college, uh, I think, in Kerala by Assemblies of God Church. Bedeil uh, Bible College, Punanur. The motto or theme of that Bible college is know Christ and make him known to others. Christ and make him known to others. That's the motto, theme of that Bible college. The Bible college encourages everyone, every student who wants to come there for theological studies, express and uh, you know, encourage them to know more about Christ. Not by from or not from the teachers, what they do in the lectures in the classroom, but by personal experiences through devotional life. Spending personal time with the uh, Bible, reading God's word, prayer. They, want to encourage, they will encourage everyone to know Christ. So here Paul with that same desire, with that same intention saying that, I want to know more about Christ. Know him first. Let me tell you dear children of God. How do we know Jesus 
We just came to know him through our parents, through our pastors, or through our Sunday school lessons that we do? Or are we knowing him through our personal experiences, personal life? It's good that, and thank God we have pastors, we have Sunday school teachers, parents, who discipline us in our spiritual life, teach us word of God. We need their instructions, advices, all those things. But I also want to encourage you, know Christ through our personal encounters with him. Amen. Amen. Know him. Ask God, Lord, give me the personal revelation about you in my life, Lord. I want to know more about you. If Paul wanted, he could have learned about Jesus more from his fellow apostles or from other people or from some history, going back to some history or some so and so. But the way he mentioned here to know Christ is that he wanted to know through his personal life, not from anyone. He wanted to experience Jesus in his personal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make that desire, Lord, I want to know you in my life, Lord. You reveal yourself to me. I want to know personally, through my experiences, the way you do things for me, the way you speak to me. I want to hear your voice. I want you to speak to me, who you are in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 13, 4 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Paul says, I want to trust God. I want to know more about Christ. Hallelujah. The more I know about him, the more I will know that he is so good. The more I can see so good in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get knowledge from listening, reading, watching, or from report or from other news. We can acquire knowledge about Jesus and about this world through different sources. Observations, studies. But we need the knowledge through our personal life, not from any other sources. Experience that comes direct by direct relationship and living into the through the knowledge about Christ. The knowledge will this knowledge will eliminate, remove all other worldly knowledge. The problem is why Christians are not strong. Because they are knowing about Christ from different people, different sources. Not through personal experiences. That's why we are not strong. This period of COVID time is revealed very much about it. We know who, are, who were strong in Christ, who were not strong in Christ. Some were just following Christ through uh, knowing him through some sources. By parents or by others forcing them to know or come to Christ. But a person who make a deeper relationship with Christ through personal experiences, they will stand strong. They will stand firm because they have been built their foundation on Christ Jesus through personal experiences. Hallelujah. Not by any other sources, resources. So knowledge about Jesus can't be obtained from any universities or any seminary. I have studied in seminaries for many years. But I can't say that I learn about Jesus from the seminary studies. The, I test God more in my life through my personal experiences. Through my personal life. There are theologians who studied in seminary for years after their studies, after they graduate, they said there is no God. Then what is the use of even learning about God or Jesus from seminaries? Okay, I, I'm not blaming about theological seminary studies, okay? If we get an opportunity, go and study. But I'm saying we can't depend upon uh, theological seminaries to know about Christ. To know more about Christ, you have to have a personal time with God. Amen. Amen. So we can't obtain the knowledge about Christ from any other sources other than spending time with the Lord by making a personal relationship with Christ. This is the reason 
Paul has passion to know more about him and power of his sufferings and resurrection. This knowledge would come through deeper intimate relationship with Christ. How much deeper have you gone to know about him? That's the question this morning I want to raise. How much deeper you have gone to know more about Christ? We think that every day coming to Sunday for attending services and Sunday school, we'll know. Of course, we'll know. We'll hear all about the Bible and about God and about Jesus. That's not enough. That is not enough. Hallelujah. It's like we are going to school and learn things from professors. But actually we learn more about uh, what we learn in the classroom when we go home after we're doing some homework. Isn't it? The teachers will send us home with some exercise, some homework to be done. Isn't it? Am I making you sense? Yeah? So we need to spend our personal time with God, with Christ. Paul is saying with that meaning. After 30, 40 years of his Christian life, he's coming almost closer to his death. He says, still says, what all I knew about Christ, that is nothing. Lord, this is not enough for me. This is not enough for me, Lord. I want to know more about you, Lord. I want to know more about the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. This morning, dear children of God, I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. Make a prayer. Make a heart desire. Lord, I want to know more about you, Lord. I want to know more about you, Lord, in my life. Lord, I want to experience you in my personal life, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Reveal yourself to me, Lord. Lead me into that realm of knowing more about you. Lord, hallelujah. I don't know which track I should be in to know more about you. Lord, you, be, you place me into that track of knowing more about you. Hallelujah. The more we come to know, the more we'll say, he's so good in our life. He's so good in my life. Then he says, I want to know the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Cross represents God's love. But resurrection represents or stands for God's power. Okay? Cross stands or represents for God's love. But resurrection represents for God's power. Amen. Two different ways we can see the hands of God the, the power of God in the Bible. In a glimpse or in a, in a short form or in a nutshell, we see the power of God in the Old Testament when God delivered God's people from the hand of Pharaoh, from the slavery, from Egypt, and leading them to the promised land, Canaan. So we see the power of God working for God's people through that experience. By delivering them from the bondage, giving, setting them free, granting them freedom, and sending them to the promised land. But when it comes to New Testament, we see the greatest power of God is the power of resurrection. The power that raised Jesus from dead. That's what I said earlier, which no doctors can do. No scientific world can help us, but only the power of resurrection can raise things in our life. Hallelujah. The power of the resurrection can change our situations. Hallelujah. The power of resurrection can bring possible into the impossible things in our life. Hallelujah. So having known that fact, Paul is making a desire that, Lord, I want to experience this power of resurrection. If I don't experience, if I want, don't realize more of this power of resurrection, no matter how much I preach, how many books I've written, it is going to be in vain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, without much explanation, let me just challenge you this morning. Make that the expression, that desire. Lord, I want to know more about you. The power of resurrection. Let me tell you, when you experience this power of resurrection, 
any dead situations that you face right now, it can bring to life. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even doctors maybe, hallelujah, they wash their hands. They said they abandon thing, the situation. They say they, they can't help you anymore. They said nothing can be done anymore in my life or in your life. But Jesus said through my power, the power of resurrection, I can bring bad things in your life. I can speak life into that situation. Hallelujah. I can resurrect things. I can bring in them to life through the power. This morning, how many of you have the desire? Lord, I want to know more about you. The power of resurrection. Lord, I want to experience that power of resurrection. Hallelujah. 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 Even before he says that desire, that prayer, he already said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. After experiencing, after he was confident enough to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even after saying that again, he is now saying, this is not enough for me. That power is not enough for me. That grace is not enough for me. I need more of his power. Hallelujah. The power of resurrection. You all need to carry that power of resurrection in our life. Hallelujah. If you don't carry that power of resurrection, our future is, our hope for future is in vain. We all believe that when Jesus comes, we will be taken up with him. How that is possible? Only through the power of resurrection. And if you don't have that power of resurrection, then how is it going to be possible? Did you get my question? Hallelujah. Let us stand together. Hallelujah. As Lord, as Paul the servant, who had very well experience in ministry and following Christ for such a long years, who was a scholar. If he wanted, he could have bossed on so many things. We know that everything is mentioned in chapter 3. But he is considering everything as rubbish and says, Lord, I want to know more about you. The power of resurrection. Lord, help us to know you, Lord. Lord, help us to experience the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Would you please raise your voice and say, Lord, Hallelujah. I want no more about you, Lord. Hallelujah. After each and every moment, Lord, after each and every minutes of my life, Hallelujah. I want to know more about you. The level of knowledge about you, Lord, should increase in my life. Hallelujah. The power, Lord, that I want to experience in my life, Lord, should be strengthened, Lord, should be increased in my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. The power that raised Jesus from dead, hallelujah. The same power can raise things in our life, hallelujah. Bring life into our life, hallelujah. Any dead situation that you face in this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. May God bless you all, amen. Hallelujah.